Hi, this is Rachel McElroy. What's up, Wonderful Nation? It's Griffin McElroy. And this is wonderful. Oh, the dogs are loose. Play the dog sound effect. A dog sound effect is played. It's it, We got a note from the um, podcast critics yeah. board for good, good podcasting oh, and uh-huh. funny yeah. jokes. And they no, said I'm we familiar. needed more drive time radio, sort of. So if you could give me like 30 seconds of that, please. Oh, you know, you know what the listening audience loves. What? Well, uh, yeah, so My that's good. Um, and we got the same note from the same sort of critics association, and they're the one that gives out the podcast Oscars. So we really do need to please them. Uh-huh. Um, that they love the air horn, okay. but they need thirty full seconds of just sort of Rachel's <laughs> drive time radio DJ persona. So if you could just go ahead and uh, do it, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's Hump Day. Wednesday with wonderful. You know what I say about that. Boop, 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 boop. So the critic is sitting in the corner of the office and they said that, um, what's that? They said you should have made some sort of sexual joke when you said hump day. <laughs> oh, see, so yeah, you were going to insert like a, um, yeah, that's even like that a, sort like of talking about insertion would sex be sex noise. Oh, okay. So I can put in like a, <laughs> like a, 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 a like sex a moan noise, like some a some kind. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. This is wonderful. On this podcast, we talk about things that we are very into, like having your microphone turned up way too loud, and there we go. And uh, other stuff. Do we want to talk about some small wonders before we get started? Because I actually have a couple. Ooh, yeah, go ahead. My first one uh, is a thing you said the other day that... <laughs> We need to sort of put into the consciousness of America. So for whatever reason, when Travis and Teresa and and BB were in town, uh, they stayed with us for a few days. And I think that's when you first learned about the term that the teens use sometimes to talk about music to say that either music slaps or is a slapper, uh, which is a very good to a way of describing a good song with a fun beat you can dance to. Yeah, I was not familiar with this, and Travis said it. Um, and you were delighted. And I was delighted. And then you tra- <laughs> you would, there was an attempt to reference it. I forget what you we were talking about, but I want to say it was the Sesame Street theme song that was playing on our uh, on our Alexa thing. Uh, sorry, by the way, to everybody who uh, I just activated your thing, and it's still going, and now it's going to be like, sorry, I don't know. <laughs> um, but... I said it's a very good song. And then Rachel said one of the best things I've ever heard, which was, yeah, it's the slap. (laughs) Not like the TV show. And since you said that, I am, uh, this is not just like me sharing a funny story of a funny thing you said. I can't stop thinking about referring to things as the slap. (laughs) It brings me so much joy. Um, My second thing, and this is kind of a weird one, but I just announced that me and Justin are leaving Polygon. And so I just wanted to mention like working at Polygon has been really, really wonderful. Um, I was a co-founder at this site. There were like eight of us and I've been with it since the start and... Uh, I've been doing video there for four years, and it's just been really wonderful, and I love the whole community, and I love everybody I work with, um, especially the video team. Like, Rachel can attest to this. Like, pretty much every night while we're in bed, I will roll over and show her some good video yeah. that the, the Polygon video team has made, and uh, I'm, I'm very sentimental, and it's a very bittersweet thing. It's I'm, I'm leaving so I can have more time to, like, focus on all the other things that we have and also have time where I'm not working. Um but yeah, it's a it's a bittersweet thing, and I just wanted to mention it on the show because I've adored working there, and this is a show where we talk about things we adore. Yeah, if you guys, by the way, if you guys haven't seen uh, some of Griffin's videos, uh, specifically Amiibo Corner, I would recommend it. It's one of my it's favorite, Rachel's favorite, yeah. my favorite series he does. You have a small wonder? Oh, you know what I can say? Huh? Poke. Poke is good. Yeah, we haven't had it in a while. I love poke. I got um, uh, inspired to enjoy it on Terrace House Aloha State. Yes, uh, and, and are, Masubi. They turned me on yeah, to all, all manner. Of are, it's foods. like a hip thing now. You can find restaurants in a lot of cities, and it's delicious. It's very good. It's like mm-hmm. sushi, but cereal. 
That's what they call <laughs> poke. It's like sushi, but if it was a big bowl of delicious cereal. Yeah, it's like a sushi burrito bowl. Mm, now, if Chipotle started fucking with oh like my gosh. raw salmon, well. are you kidding me? Is <laughs> the, there any place? Like, I feel like every other dangerous. week it's like, ugh, we got botulism in our salsa again. <laughs> okay, well, this time no more botulism. We did get E. coli on our tortillas. Dang it. <laughs> Can you imagine them like, and now we're going to do fatty tuna raw. Nothing against Chipotle. We eat Chipotle. I'll no, put something against Chipotle. They're pumping their foods with fucking E. coli that every other That doesn't stop us from eating it. That's true. Sometimes you got to <laughs> roll the hard six. I think it's, it's your turn to start. definitely my turn this time. I don't know why you get territorial. We both go two times. <laughs> <laughs> we both go twice. It's not like one of us gets more <clears throat> stuff. Uh, so my first thing yes. uh, this week is he always been breakfast. Yeah. Rachel's laughing because I tried to bring this during the small wonder and she said no. <laughs> I cut him off. That's my first thing. Uh, there are two seasons of it now on Netflix. Can we set up, by the way, how strange it is that we discovered this show because of your mom? Yeah. This is a, a Korean reality we, show. Yeah, we got my mom to watch uh, Terrace House. So it must have just showed up in and her it like, probably, recommendations. Yeah, it probably was recommended to her. And she, when uh, my parents were in town, mentioned it. And at first I was like, this seems really slow. Because it really is. It's just a, a famous uh, couple uh yori who used to be a k-pop star she was huge huge yeah. still, still practices i believe a little bit but in uh 2006 she was the highest paid female singer in south korea yes very big like and, um, britney spears heyday level yeah uh like level of celebrity uh she was a model for calvin klein jeans she was in a commercial with jessica alba uh, That's how you know you fucking made it. Also, briefly featured in a 2010 Adidas commercial. She married Sang Soon, who uh, is a guitarist in the rock band Roller Coaster. And they moved into their vacation home on Jeju Island, which uh, is actually, it's just 714 square miles and it's a volcanic island. Uh, 714 square miles? Yeah. That's fucking huge. It doesn't seem big to me. 714 square miles? I don't, maybe I don't have a concept of size. That's very big. <laughs> oh, okay. That's huge. It seems small to me. No, that's a quite a big <laughs> island, it seems like. Um, we should mention, we don't know, we did not know who these people were before we started no. watching the show, um, which no, is probably evident in hearing us talk about it. So they turn their house into a bed and breakfast, uh, and the first episode is really just them getting ready to host their first guests. And it moves kind of slowly. They have dogs and cats, and we see them kind of purchasing things to get their house ready. Um, they live a very simple lifestyle, a very chill yeah. lifestyle. Like they ha they just make tea every morning, and then they sit outside. Sang Soon, I think, sits outside on the porch for about nine hours a day. <laughs> they just sort of appreciate the simpler things, and they have a bunch of pets they that they've adopted. They, they have do gardens. yoga. It's very, and then they've decided, like, okay, now let's start inviting like eight to twelve strangers into our house every single day. Yeah, it is a very novel concept that. That it really, really uh, translates over. Like we do not watch, uh, we do not watch like a lot of Korean television programming of any kind. But much like you know, sort of how we started watching Terrace House when we weren't watching a lot of Japanese uh, television programming. Like it crosses the 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 divide, I think, very easily because it's so relatable and such a wild concept. Yeah, yeah. So when we started watching it, I was like, um, "How is this going to hold my attention?" And then within like 20 minutes, I was just like totally hooked in. And it's so relaxing. If you all think Terrace House is relaxing, this show is like next level relaxing. It's got good vibes. It's yeah. got real good, real good vibes. They will do every episode once or twice an episode. Like a guest will be like, who's this dog? And they will tell them <laughs> uh, this dog's name is Guana. And then there will be like a three minute long video package about Guana and the history of Guana and some great footage of the dog playing. It is just like so relaxing. Yeah. And actually, uh, Hiori is, is a big animal rights activist uh, in South Korea, uh, which explains all of their adopted pets that they have and the attention they pay to them the, um, it, it's also got like a lot of interesting stuff to say about like celebrity and moving yeah. on from from celebrity and how you like are allowed to interact with your fans after that point like 
when the show opens up, apparently the rumor had gone around the whole island that they had moved away. And so every time they see anybody, it's like, oh, I thought you left. Yeah. And it's like, no, we're not leaving. We were actually turning our house into a, a B&B. Um, so, yeah, so they did two seasons. There is a suggestion there might be a third, uh, but... There are new se- new episodes coming every every week. There's like oh, a little banner on that okay. like saying new episodes every week. Um, but I will say that I guess the couple has uh, since had to post on their Facebook page that people have started showing up at their house, yes. not as guests. Uh, so yeah. They've had to discourage people from invading their privacy. So With I, turrets and robots. And- I am not sure that they will do a third season. But um, Griffin and I watch it pretty much every night before I go to sleep. Uh, and it is, it is just the best way to unwind. There's so many things about this show that I adore. All of the animals are extremely cute and like, yeah, I'm really into that. Um, The two, Hiori and Sang Soon are the most in love. Yes. And it's very, that warms my heart very much. Like every night, the show kind of happens almost in, not in real time, but it kind of feels like it. Like every episode is basically a day. And so it always ends with like the two of them in whatever weird corner of the house they have allowed themselves to fall asleep in because yeah, so every they, it's not a big house and they have so many guests. It has a really large living space, but the I think from what I can tell, there's only one bedroom. And for some reason, they invite like a dozen guests to share the space. So they have created their own little alcove, which is just like a mattress under on the, the floor. stairs, like Harry Potter style. <laughs> but every night when they go to bed, she like wakes up saying soon and says, honey, I want to talk. Just not in like a threatening way. Like if you told me like, I want to talk, I would, I would get like very nervous because I feel like for most people that has like connotations of like, uh oh, what happened? But for them, they, they just wanted to talk. Just yeah. wanted to hear the, the other first person's episode, voice. They're like in the car driving somewhere and they have a conversation about how much they like talking to each other. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. And the guests are all very like, uh, like have disparate sort of yeah. stuff going on. Um, and they're, and they're very enjoyable, but it's like watching, it's, it's, it's interesting watching a show because I don't, uh, I can't think of any other show like it where like celebrities, like Mondo celebrities, like have bonfires with just yeah. random people. And it's not like they are fawning over the celebrities the whole time. It's just like them sort of getting to live as people with other people. They so Yeah. And they so earnestly want to do well at it. Uh, like for example, there's an older couple uh, that flies in uh, and can't get to the bed and breakfast. And so Sang Soon hops in the car and drives 30 minutes to go pick them up because there's no bus to take them out there. And then it's, like books them a taxi to go fishing. Yeah, and, like, and plans he, their whole weekend for it, them. It is such a sweet, sweet show. Yes. And, um, we've, we've been enjoying it a lot. Um, I have two things that are kind of connected. My first thing is... A campfire. Oh, really? Yeah, any old campfire. And I know you said, oh, really, because this is not something that we do very often, right? Like, no. we, I'm not a big camping boy these days, and no. also never was <laughs> one. I have been camping maybe four times. I'm one of those, like, city slickers. I have thought that about you. I'm one of them city slickers. I said, this, this boy has big city dreams. Big city dreams and these slickers. And a big city heart. Big city slick heart. <laughs> yeah. But um, I do like a campfire. Um, and maybe it's because of the scarcity with which I see a campfire. <laughs> I, I say campfire. This counts, I think, for like fire pit in a backyard. I think also bonfires, but I've also been to... Uh, bonfires are 50-50 for me because about 50% of the time I'm like, oh, cool, big fire. And the other 50% of the time I'm like, too big. <laughs> Calm down. Chill out. Are we trying to catch a helicopter's attention or something? Too hot. Hot on my face. I can't yeah, even get close hot. to this thing. Mm-hmm. The fire gets freaking hot sometimes. I have noticed that about fire. <laughs> like, I see it and I don't want to touch it. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, I just love every part of the, like, campfire process. Like, building one, when I finally learned how to actually build a campfire, I definitely had many times where I was just like, all right, there's three big pieces of wood. I'm going to put my Bic lighter <laughs> under it. Like, nope, 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 nope. Like, actually learning to build one and then being able to su- successfully do it is, like, very rewarding. We definitely, Griffin had a save dryer lint for, like, 
I don't know. Learn that one from Badkin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we never used it. No, we used it once for the oh, okay. fire we actually talked about in our last episode where we used oh, okay. the starter logs <laughs> definitely help. Um, but building one is so, it's so slow, right? You have to like nurture it and you yeah. have to put in like uh, a tinder and kindling and then you have to like put on the small sticks leading up to the bigger sticks. And then when you have this big fire, you're like, yeah, that started out as nothing. And I made that and that's very cool. And I, I can do it. And it's like one of the few like outdoorsy, uh, like physical things I feel like I can do. And so that is uh, the only feather in my cap. You feel like bare fucking grills whenever you can pull off a nice <laughs> fire. Um, and then once it's built, you get so much out of it, right? You get heat, you get light, you can cook on it. And you can cook all the foods you can cook on a campfire are all fucking great. That's Hot dogs, marshmallows. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess that's it, huh? Corn, maybe? Corn, maybe, but it would just pop and turn into poppy corn, wouldn't it? <laughs> A lot of people put stuff in little foil packs and throw it in there. At that point, it's just like, go, you know, go drive to the gas station and use their microwave. <laughs> no, don't. It's foil. Um, it scares bugs away. That's probably not scientifically how it works. There's probably some sort of force where the bugs are like, oh, I don't want to go near that. What? But I don't think they see the fire and they're like, ah, I got to get the fuck out of here. Unless it's a moth who's backwards. What's up with that? <laughs> Mosquito buzz around, buzz, 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 hey, gonna look for blood. Can oh, I, fire, bye. A moth is like, sucker, I, uh, I love this fire. Dies. Can I, can I stop this for a second? Mm. How do you feel about the smell? The smell, Rachel? Like, specifically when it gets in you. Oh. Like, when well, you go to bed and, and you yeah, smell like it. Yeah, that changes absolutely nothing. It's you the like best that? fucking smell in the world. I, I always kind of do it first. Um but I don't, I don't like it the next day. Here's the thing about that fire stink. One shower and it's gone. There's lots of stinks that are out there that can be pleasant. <laughs> and then you get them in and on and around your skin yeah. and in your ducts. And then that's your fucking week. Yeah. Onions. Are, 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 I have trouble with onions sometimes or garlic, garlic sometimes. When I eat the garlic bread and I love the garlic bread and then I take a shower and I smell at that point like, you know, cucumber mint or whatever I just put on my body with a little bit of garlic in there also. <laughs> I hate that. Yeah. Can't fire you, wash it off. It's gone. No big deal. But it's the best smell, like full stop. The sound is good too. Yeah, the sound is very good. Oh, and the sound and the look of it with like, the, it's always changing. It's always different. Staring into a campfire is like really hypnotic, partially because it's visually interesting, right? It's always changing. But I think there's something more like primitive to it than that. Like, oh, for sure. This preternatural, like, fear of fire or at least fascination or reverence to fire i think is is really fascinating and very powerful and it's communal in a way that many things are not right it's uh, we could have friends over and watch tv or play a game and then we are actively engaging in that thing but with a fire a fire demands your attention without consuming it right like oh yeah so at that point, if it's in the middle of a circle of people, everybody's looking inward and can't look away because of the fire. But who's on the other end of the fire? It's me, and I'm telling a very haunted story. I know that you didn't do Boy Scouts, but did you ever do any kind of like group oh, yeah. camping, scary story kind of thing? I mean, church camp, but then the scary, the scary story is that your friend was going <laughs> to die in a car wreck and you didn't get him saved. <laughs> oh, no. Which is way worse than getting killed by Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger kills me in my dreams. Pop! I'm just up in heaven. My friend Bryce crashes yeah. his bicycle into the creek, and I didn't spread the good word. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I do. I've got something for you to read later. Okay. <laughs> I think you're really going to like it. And then when you put out the fire, that's fun, too, because you get all the, like, the steam and the dying embers. And you, I don't, just, you, don't, you don't pee on a fire, do you? You would never. You wouldn't steal a car. Why would you pee on a fire? Some people do that to put it out, and I don't like oh. it. Oh, so crass um i just love how like universal a fire is like it transcends campfire transcends time it transcends language and culture like i, I the first bond like campfires were being made like 1.3 million years ago and those people definitely needed it more than i need it because i have Mm -hmm. Game Boy, um, second Game Boy, I have yeah, I Central like Air. an equivalency between a Game Boy and a fire, as if a Game Boy could keep you warm? No, but it would entertain me. That's okay. what I'm saying. They, okay. needed, they needed that shit. For the shit entertainment. For, but they needed it to cook their food and, you know, probably boil their water so yeah. they didn't die when they were, like, adults of 12 years old. And you need the Game Boy 
I need it. I mean, I got to have my Game Boy. But even though they need it more than I needed it, we still get the same stuff out of it. And that's very cool. Mm -hmm. 1.3 million years ago is a very long time ago. And I have very little in common with them. Mm -hmm. I have very little in common with Homo erectus, um, except for pretty much to this and a lot of the times they tried to grow a beard according to what i saw at museums and it looked shitty and i'm kind of in the same boat <laughs> there too um i just think it's fascinating to think back to like the dawn of man and me doing the same shit um and Maybe also not with dryer lint though not with dryer lint well they you don't know you don't know what they had back then. There may have been some sort of dryer lint plant that went extinct. <laughs> but I also love, you know, just getting around a fire with some friends and being around this, like, yeah. pretty, cool-sounding, good-smelling thing. For me, that's one of the only reasons to go camping. It's maybe the only reason to go camping. <laughs> um, hey, can I sell you away? Come sell you away. Come sell you away. Come sell you away with me. Is that whale noises? Sure. <laughs> we just did like a musical there. Yeah. Can we keep it going? No, not at all. <laughs> um, I want to tell you about MeUndies. Do you know about them? You're going to love this. Do you know how you wear pants? Yes. What if you had... Littler pants that go underneath. Ooh. Yeah, so double pants, and you know how you wear your pants and you go for like a run or a walk or you bend over, yeah. and there's so much rubbing against all of <laughs> your weak points. Yeah, uh-huh. You got to get some smaller pants to go in under that. Now, would these small pants be yeah. uncomfortable? A hundred percent of the time, yes. Except for, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> That was me shooting the competition with two guns because I'm here to tell you about me undies. Okay. It specifically says here you need to pantomime shooting our competition's underwear away with two guns. Okay. So, um, no, I trust them. They probably don't want me to say any brands that aren't there. So I'm going to say um, vegetable of the weave. Va- weave. <laughs> that was me shooting their shitty underwear because MeUndies is the only game in town. They are a balance of great and comfortable fit and exciting prints. They use a sustainably sourced, naturally soft fiber that starts with beechwood trees and ends with amazingly soft fabric. MeUndies Adventures prints are all limited edition and new patterns are released every few weeks. For any first time purchasers, when you purchase any MeUndies, you get 20% off and free shipping. They're so sure you're going to love their underwear. They offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love your first pair, you get a full refund. All my underwear these days is MeUndies. Very fortunate in that regard. I am constantly being cradled by the softest cloud. You got some too? I do. All right. (laughs) (laughs) To get your 20% off your first pair, uh, free shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash wonderful. That's MeUndies.com slash wonderful. Um, I also want to tell you about Ring. Ring is is great we yeah. uh yeah, they have these little cameras and they come in a few different forms you can get one that is a doorbell so somebody rings your doorbell you can just like it doesn't uh-huh. take that long what but that means is it's a computer phone. <laughs> yeah and you can see who it is and they have like little floodlight cams and all kinds of stuff they are dedicated to helping change the way you think about home security a ring video doorbell lets you see and speak to intruders on your smartphone uh from anywhere even share video clips to neighbors using the ring app it says intruder here but you can also like say a you know a thank you to somebody dropping off a, a thing or maybe you're in the toilet and somebody drops off a thing and you just want to be like thanks but you want to scare them like justin does every time he <laughs> gets a package rings floodlight cam and spotlight cam uh, let you build a ring of security around your entire property uh, so right now you can save up to $150 on a ring of security kit at ring.com slash wonderful. That's ring.com slash wonderful. It's $150 off when you go to ring.com slash wonderful. This message is for Tyler Jameson. It is from Jackie McCook. Congratulations on becoming the world's cutest certified advanced wheel builder slash bike mechanic. You are amazing. And I hope you know how proud I am of you. I love how you show your love by giving people bike parts. I love you and think we should be together for a bit. From Jackie and your cat, whose name I'm too embarrassed to put, but you know who. Oh, we are going to spend the next 20 minutes trying to figure out what this cat's name is. 
cahoots is. Guy Fieri. Guy Fier- Furry. Oh, Guy Furry, that's nice. Guy Furry is good. But you have to say it like really weird. Like you have to really, to, in order to get the pun across of who you're doing, you really need Guy Furry. Cat Stevens. The best. Not embarrassing. It's got to be like Mr. Pussy Willow. What? I can say Pussy Willow. Okay. Can I say Pussy Willow? Um, not, not three times. Not three times. <laughs> <laughs> can I read this next message? Sure you can. This message is for Kaylee. It is from past Kaylee. Hey, buddy. I'm sure someday someone will buy you a Jumbotron instead of buying one for yourself. Until then, just remember I love you. You love yourself. And if you keep doing that, Everything will be wonderful. See what you did there? You're so smart. This is great. This is kind of this is coming in in the, the the beginning of the third act of the movie about this. You set this up. This was Chekhov's gun and you're like, uh, "What a funny thing to do." And then some shit goes bad in the second act and then you find the hero's strength in this message from yourself for act 3. And then credits. That sounds threatening though, doesn't it? Does. It does. Yeah, I don't think Kaylee has necessarily that kind of arc yeah well nobody does <laughs> welcome everyone to the live wrestling spectacular in los angeles so far the world's most boring wrestling podcast has been destroying the competition isn't there anyone who can save us from this travesty wait could it be it's tights and fights the perfect wrestling podcast Tights and Fights is here to save us from the monotony of boring wrestling podcasts with hilarious conversations. Woke trips through the history of wrestling. And joke about the finer points of people wearing spandex. What a match! And the Tights and Fights podcast will be back every week. Thursdays on MaximumFun.org or wherever you get podcasts. Please, these hosts have families. Tights and Fights Podcast. Tights and Fights. You want to hear my second thing? I want to hear it so bad, I think I could shit. What? I'm very excited to hear your second thing. Griffin, I have four words for you. Eat my shorts, bud. You think that's the wonderful thing I'm bringing in this week? Ass, gas, grass, bud. No. Um, you don't please stop guessing. <laughs> where's the beef, dude? Mavis Beacon teaches typing. <laughs> the game begins. <laughs> oh my God. It is fucking on. Yes. This came to me yes. last night. Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> she's doing it this came to me last night uh while i was laying in bed and i thought please rachel don't forget this please rachel don't forget this and, when you wake up in the morning and you didn't write it down i didn't write it down baby I elizabeth gilbert trusted. would be very disappointed and you gotta write that shit down you gotta take the idea seriously or else it's gonna go to somebody else that's the big magic dog no i know big magic dog is her next book <laughs> uh Mavis Beacon Teaches Typing was developed. Um, Broderbund? You know, I think it ended up with Broderbund at one point, but it was developed in 1987. So was I. That's true. I was in development hell. I got caught up there, but they, they got me out the door. Here's something. Okay, there's a lot that's interesting about this. But first, I'm going to say something that shocked me. Uh-oh. It may or may not shock you. And I'm going to need you to pay complete attention. I am. I just had to make sure it was Broderbund, and it was. What a good name for a game company. Go on. Mavis Beacon is not a real person. (laughs) (laughs) You were laughing? Yes, I am laughing. Uh, She was played by multiple people throughout the series. I I thought it was based on a historical... (laughs) Computer typist. A lot of people have thought this so much so that the software company has gotten requests to interview her and have appearances oh, that's from good. Mavis herself. Okay, in your defense and everybody else's defense, it's pretty wild to invent 
a typing character. Yes, so this is what's interesting. <laughs> yes. So the company that made this, the designers also made the chess master game yes which starred a like chess wizard right so they were big on this like personification thing of like let's put an actual figure attached to this so it's not just like your everyday game apparently with the chess wizard game or chess master 2000 rather uh they paid ten thousand dollars for the photo shoot <laughs> to get this guy that became the chess master wizard guy. Can I please take a moment to Google this this dude? Yeah, sure. This fucking guy. And his pixelated version, he looks like um who's the guy who played the dude in the Big Lebowski? Oh, Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges. This Jeff Bridges ask look like this this is so good. And he's peering over like a hologram chess set and he looks like um if my dad got struck by lightning and had sort of a different life path, he went down. Okay, sorry. So uh, Mavis Beacon was named for uh, Mavis Staples, who was one of the developer's favorite singers. And should be everybody's. And the word Beacon, which is an allusion to her role as the typing guide. I did not know she was named after Mavis Staples. Yeah. That's very interesting. Uh, so the original model they discovered working behind the perfume counter at Saks Fifth Avenue. Uh, and so they paid this woman $500. Oh, you mean not the $10,000 that you paid fucking fake Jeff Bridges to be yeah. the chess master 2000? You mean you only did 5% what you... Okay, cool. No, that seems great. Uh, and they gave her a new suit, which was probably... Worth $9,500. $9, $9, <laughs> Uh, and they did the photo shoot with her uh, to represent a modern professional typing instructor. I learned with this. Did you learn with this? Uh, well, yes. That was my first introduction. My parents bought it for me. And then I took a keyboarding class in high school. That okay. was kind of my my final stamp. Are the they still doing keyboarding? Because I took it in middle school. And I definitely did like three years of Mavis Beacon. But like these days, who's teaching kids to type? I hope it still happens because honestly, like having dedicated time to practice is not something I think a lot of people do. And it really like made a huge difference for me. It's the most, it's the thing I do more than anything yeah, else, literally all day, every day. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's part of the reason I brought it. Like it, it was a fun way to learn typing. Um, but was it a thing there were just during a decade during the nineties? It was like, oh shit, we got to teach kids how to use these fucking things. And well, so as of. 98 she had instructed 6 million school children uh and it is still the best-selling instructional typing software well <laughs> um, compared to what yeah i don't know mario don't know. teaches typing typing of the dead <laughs> um yeah so I, I don't know if it's still an active thing but i think it's really important and i think like mavis beacon is such a like I don't know. It's such a good touchstone for me. I'm looking at the Broderbund website. I can't say it. I don't know. Have you gotten a chance to say it yet? Broderbund? In my life or on this podcast? On this podcast. just It's so good. It just drivels from the tongue. I love it. I'm looking at the website. There's three versions here. Mavis Beacon teaches typing powered by Ultra Key V2 Family Edition. Okay. Mavis Beacon teaches typing powered by Ultra Key 2 V2 Personal Edition. So that's if you don't want your kids to know how to type. And then there's Mavis Beacon keyboarding kids with a Z. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like that there's a kids only version. We're all typing in the same keyboard. You know what I mean? Well, the words are probably like Apple, simpler. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, yeet. Things that the kids are using. <laughs> the slap. This is such a, you have taken me on a fucking journey because I feel like I reference Mavis Beacon uh -huh. and the same thing as like Math Blaster and Number Crunchers and Mystical Island. Oregon or, Trail. Uh, Oregon Trail, Mysterious Island of the Zumbinis, I think. All of these I like. I know that one. All of these like edu games, right? Yeah. And I talk about them as if, as if they are a novelty, right? I think in Mavis Beacon's case, that's unfair because I learned to fucking type playing these games. Yeah. What's your WPM? What can oh, you, get up to? you know what? I thought you might ask this. So oh. I did it today. Oh, shit. I did a typing test today that was a minute long. What'd you get? Or should I do mine real quick and then? Yours is going to be much faster, Griffin. Why? Because you do all the internet stuff. 
I made a mistake. This is really good audio. I got 104. Really? Yeah. What are you at? I don't want to say. No, what are you at? <laughs> what did you get? What did you get? Are you, are you, baby, can I tell me? What did you get? 61. <laughs> I didn't think yours would be that high. I didn't get any mistakes, though, when I did it. That's what it is. I got 104, but I made two mistakes. My accuracy was 97.16%. So really, a 61, I feel like, what's the average? I think they said it was like 50 or something. 40. 40 words per minute. Okay. I didn't know mine was that good. Yeah, I thought mine was not very that good. That was really intense. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so thank you. And you know why? Mavis, 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 Mavis. You've just taken me on a trip. All I want to talk about is Mavis Beacon. Um, but I do want to talk about my second thing. Please. Survivor. Yes. This is one of those things where I swear to God I've talked about this before we've on this show. We've talked about this show. Okay, but, have but we, I don't think we've, we've done, done a full segment on it. I don't it. think so. Um, we are currently watching a current season, which is Survivor, Ghost Island. Ghost Island. Where when they lose, they kill them. <laughs> <laughs> and then their ghost has to compete. Their ghost has to compete. So there's a million dollars for the living human winner and then a million ghost coins. What's great is that the ghosts don't eat the the rice so there's more food that's true but the players eat the ghosts so it's kind of a reverse pac-man situation um okay survivor i'm gonna make this quick because i think there's a lot of people who just turned it off because i feel like nobody really watches survivor anymore but everybody it's gotten very good and let me tell you why same premise is the same every episode there are a couple challenges usually one for like a reward which makes like uh, life a little bit easier for the 16 contestants who get dropped off on this island with very few su- supplies, so like a meal or a fishing kit or a hammock or something like that. And then there's an immunity challenge, and if your your tribe wins that, then you don't have to kick somebody off that week. The other tribe does, and then at some point there's a merge where all the remaining players come together, and then at that point you're just kind of voting for individuals. It? If you last uh, the whole time, 39 days, I want to say 39 days yeah. total. Um, every three days there's a, there's a tribal council. Um, whoever wins the immunity challenge gets the necklace and then they can't be voted for basically. And then they go to a tribal council at the end where a majority vote will kick off one player. That was like the starting formula, right? Yeah. And then it gets down to like two or three players who are the finalists. And then they have to stand in front of a jury made up of like the last eight people to be kicked off and plead their case for why they deserve the million dollars. And then the jury votes on who they give it to. So there's a like a power reversal there where now all of a sudden you have to like, you know, lower yourself before the people that you screwed over so that they will give you a million dollars. And that's a very fascinating twist. The thing that got this game very interesting, if you watched it back in what fucking... 2001 or so uh is the addition of hidden immunity idols and those are usually hidden all around the island wherever the the game is taking place or sometimes like under a bench like hiding in plain sight like during an immunity challenge those Those are very good a player has to like walk right up to somebody and bend that down and pick up the immunity idol that was hidden at their feet and those you can play on anybody uh, during the uh, during the tribal council, after everybody's placed their votes, and then any votes for them will not count. So there, it's very tough to play one of these correctly because you have to know who everybody's voting for. You have to know who to play it on. Um, they are very uh, strategically powerful, and so they're kind of hard to come by. So having one gives you a big advantage in the game, and it adds like a level of uncertainty to the game that didn't exist before. Right before, it could just be like, well, there's six of us and three of them. So let's vote them off. Well, and people use them a lot as currency because like trust is such a big part of this game. And so people will try and curry favor in their alliance by saying, hey, I'm going to tell you, and I haven't told anybody else, but I have an immunity idol. Which don't fucking do that. It never makes sense. It It has never worked out ever. (laughs) Um, There's a lot of other stuff that can, can, not a lot. Like usually every season there's like one gimmick. For instance, this season it's Ghost Island where they kill you. Um, no, they send you to like an island. If you lose a challenge, they send you to an island by yourself. And then there's a chance that you can play a game uh, to get like some sort of advantage. But if you lose the game, you lose your vote for that episode, which is an interesting twist. This idea of like just straight up gambling to try to get an, an advantage in the game um, and knowing like when is the right time to do it and when is the wrong time to do it. It's it's interesting. Also, this is like the most fan service season ever yes. because the like ghost island thing is everybody who's played this game has made mistakes and 
And so these artifacts are like past hidden immunity idols and fake hidden immunity idols that people have used to try to pass off that yeah. are now real because of the spirits of the yeah, island. Like this idol is from this contestant in season four who went home with it in his pocket and it's cursed. Now it's cursed and you can break the curse by... <laughs> um, and so that's like this season's gimmick. But really, the core of the game is form alliances with other players so that you can be the majority vote at the end win challenges right get rewards and get immunity for yourself and for your team find hidden immunity idols so that you have secret advantages that nobody else knows about and then know what the fuck everybody else is going to do or at least try to and know who to trust and know when to make the correct moves it is it is a it is a very simple game every episode plays out essentially with the same format there's a couple challenges maybe a shakeup of who's in what tribe and then the the tribal council and yet every episode also plays out a little bit differently because of this this human element um and it's it's one of those shows that i feel like never gets boring rachel and i've watched every season because there is no one set path to victory there have been people who have won the show because they were challenge beasts and just won every immunity necklace and were never in danger of going home somehow made it through like the final three and and then everybody voted for them because they're like they were just fucking great at challenges then there were people who were so deceitful and played nasty nasty games and then they made it to the jury uh and everybody thought like well nobody's gonna vote for them they were shitty and then the jury says like yeah they were shitty and they were really good at it here's a million dollars or there's people who are really nice and then they make it to the finals and they're like yeah they didn't make any big moves but they were really nice so here's a million dollars well and what's become interesting about the later seasons is that there's so many contestants that have an awareness of previous seasons yes and so you watch them kind of get in their own heads and be like this is my time to make a big move so when i get to the end the jury will recognize how much i played this game and and all of that is based on what has happened in past seasons. And this is yeah. especially prevalent in like all-star seasons, which if you are intrigued by this at all and want to watch it, go watch any of the most recent all-star seasons. They are fucking club bangers because yeah. everybody there knows what's up and every episode is like blind sides and big moves. But, but that idea of everybody in the game knows about the game because of what has happened in past games reflects a very big like competitive video game idea of the meta which basically just means like well what is the community what is the community by virtue of how they play a game decided is the best and strongest you know strategy or hearthstone deck or like a league of legends character but the idea of the meta being like how the community has decided through play is the best and strongest thing this is the only game i know of where that exists in this reality show game because people play it following these archetypes that have worked in the past. And maybe they don't work this time and they almost never do because everything is always different because you have 16 new people with new personalities and new things that will make them trust other people that you, that you don't know about when you go into the season. Um, It, it, the game itself is a, is a great idea, right? It is a game for television, especially it's a game about consolidating power and then about trying to dismantle these power structures yeah. before they become too too powerful and then just you know rampage through the whole season and things like the hidden immunity idols give you sort of stones in in your in your sling that you can use to slay the giants um and so like that's entertaining to watch like seeing a big reversal happen every couple episodes which it almost always does on a good season it's like really really good but this human element of like not knowing who's going to win because literally everybody Like anybody could win. Anybody has won. The list of winners is not just like big, strong person, big, strong person, big, strong. Um, And because of that, I think that like I watch the show and I think, yeah, I could fucking win that. (laughs) And I'm not like that with anything else. Now I couldn't because I have to sleep with four pillows every night. (laughs) Um, And you have a very sensitive, very sensitive belly. Um, I try not to get like too Kathy on it, but like if I do not have coffee in the morning, it's not like a fun McDonald's commercial where it's like, <laughs> <laughs> don't talk to me till I've had my Joe. Um, I would literally, I would literally start hurting all over my bones. <laughs> um, but it's still inspiring to see like, all of these different types of people win a million dollars at this game. And you don't get that from most other yeah. reality shows like amazing race. Usually it's like two, you know, very fit people who are, you know, I'm a, Oh, we're professional cross country runners. And it's like, Oh, well fucking duh. Like, yeah. of course you won. 
Um, but like people surprise you on this show and win. Um, it is just, it is, it is pound for pound. Like I think the most entertaining competitive reality show, cause you, you don't really know what to expect. And it is, it is built around just constant turnabouts of, of people taking power away from other people as they try to build their, their, their alliances and everything. I just love it so much. It's very entertaining. What's the best survivor play you've ever seen? Ooh. The season's had some fucking good ones. I mean, Boston Rob is a popular choice. Yeah, but then his season where he won was just like, let's give Boston Rob a season. And it was kind of boring. <laughs> Anytime where um, they play two idols in one thing, like um, yeah, uh, Parvati playing the, yeah. the two idols to protect, not even her. She had two hidden immunity idols. She played them on two people in her alliance, but not herself. Yeah, And it ended up blocking like all of the votes from the other team. And she took their shit apart. Uh, that was a very, very good one. The one where the Alliance of All Women convinced the man to give away his immunity idol yeah. that he had actually won at the challenge to prove his loyalty to them. So she, they would take them like on their, on their, tr- on their alliance. Yeah, and then they fucking good. literally took the necklace off his neck, walked into <laughs> the voting booth and then kicked him out. Like, oh, that's so good. Sandra is a good one too. Sandra is very, very good at the game. Siri is very good at the Yeah. I, I'm not like this. I can't tell you contestants from past seasons of Top Chef. I can name 20 Survivor contestants. Yeah. Off that, Cause it's so good at building characters. Cause it's all about underdogs and, you know, people to, people to root for. Um, anyway, that's Survivor. Nobody's listening anymore. <laughs> Nobody cares about Survivor anymore. We had talked about like doing. What if we did a Survivor podcast instead? But then we decided there would be eight people who would listen to it. Um, we're, we're not asking. To we're change. not. Please, God, do not <laughs> please, ask please us don't. to do a Survivor podcast. <laughs> if I quit Polygon and then the following week said like, and here's why, I'm doing a Survivor podcast. <laughs> I think that people would come and uh, leave me mean comments. Do you want some submissions? Yes. Austin says, I've read Calvin and Hobbes since I was in the second or third grade, and it's been one of the most enduring sources of happiness and joy for me. The combination of Calvin's vivid imagination and alter egos with stories about not fitting in at school and the genuinely wholesome uh, relationship with his stuffed tiger makes it my favorite comic series of all time. And I love it when he pees on those car logos, too. Do you read much Calvin and Hobbes? You know, I did, but not enough. Like, I read it when it was in the paper, um, but I've never owned like a book of Calvin and Hobbes. I, oh my God, we used to own, we owned I'm, all of them. We I owned, would very much like to get back into it. What was, there's one called like scientific progress goes boink. Like I could, we had a lot of them and they yeah. lived next to our toilet. Is that weird? And probably Did you not. have toilet books? No. Don't be, it's not gross. We had all Calvin and Hobbes. We had some far side by the toilet. We had some, um, deep thoughts. You remember that deep thoughts? Yes. And then uh, Uncle John's Bathroom Reader. I'm so glad. Baskets, big baskets full of toilet bags. How is he? Is this gross? Baby, this was a staple of my life, and I'm just now thinking about it. I mean, one germs. It probably splashed down. One, a lot of germs. Two. A lot of piss. It, it suggests that this person is spending a lot of time in the bathroom. <laughs> I know. I've met you before. Well. Mm-hmm. But it prolongs it almost. Like it suggests, like I'm not here to get in and get out. I'm here to just relax. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Hi, thumbs down. Austin, I'm sorry that your topic turned into this. Yeah, I, I love Calvin and Hobbes. Thumbs down to bathroom reading. Uh, wrong. Macy says, I love listening to you guys talk about good things for an hour every week. My good thing right now is rearranging bookshelves. I've been doing it a lot recently between my church and my own shelves, and there's something really nice and tactile about pushing books around on a shelf to make room for more books. I actually like this, too. Yeah. What's not to like? Rearranging your, your stuff? I, I would mean, always, if I if you go to the library and you see people reshelving, I would always think like, oh, that's got to be a satisfying <laughs> gig. You ever walk up to him like, lucky? <laughs> no, I recognize it's probably not as exciting as it appears. You decorated at our old house the books. You arranged them in order of color, and I thought that was so wonderful. Yeah, I, I mean, just in our living space. I didn't do that with every single book we own, 
but I thought it would be a nice touch for our living room. Uh, a few people sent this one in. This is from Mobster Seeker who says, uh, Safari Live, daily Safari live streams. Twice a day, they stream safaris from South Africa and answer questions about them live. Have we talked about this before? No. We talked about some similar sort of zoological uh, uh, live stream thing. Uh, the crazy stuff happens there constantly. The drama is real. It's sort of like Game of Thrones, but better because most of the main characters are leopards. <laughs> Game of Thrones would be much better if they were all leopards. Yeah, I'd watch that show. Um, Game of Game of Bones because they eat the animals. <laughs> Sorry, Zebra. You're all bones now. Oh, I love the way you said that. Which part? Zebra. I was trying to say Debra. Can you tell people where they can submit if they want to send us things? Uh, yes, I would love to do that. Go ahead and shoot us an email at wonderfulpodcast at gmail.com. And that's going to get right to us. We're going to read it all. Keep it keep it kind of short. We like to read like one or two sentence submissions. Um, we love reading your your wonderful thoughts. But uh, if you keep it a little bit shorter, good chance to land up on the show. And uh, hey, thanks to Bowen and Augustus for the use of our theme song, Money Won't Pay. There's a link to that in the episode description. And thank you to Maximum Fun for having us. Oh, Max Fun. Uh, it's a wonderful network full of wonderful podcasts like our podcast, Wonderful. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, these podcasts kick ass. You know what my favorite is? Ours. I will recommend this week, I'll recommend uh, Judge Sean Hodgman. Hmm. Um, you know, so you may be familiar with Jesse Thorne, and you may be familiar with John Hodgman, but I will say when they get together to decide real life disputes, it is very charming. Peanut butter and bow ties. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It is it is a wonderful listen. I recommend it. Yeah, it's very fun. Uh, and if you want to hear more stuff from our fam, you can go to McElroyShows.com. Um, is that it? That's it. Good. <sighs> what if I just turn off all the lights and we sit here in complete silence? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's I saw, silent I, in yeah, here. Yeah, I saw a big skeleton. Let me try again. Just make sure. Nope. Yeah, they're still there. No way. No way. No way. <laughs> MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Do you love books? Want to get more out of all that reading you do? I'm Bria Grant. And I'm Mallory O'Mara. Join us every Thursday on Reading Glasses, where we help you read better. Reading Glasses is a show about book culture, teaching you how to enhance your literary life and solve your bookish problems, like how do you get out of a reading slump? What's the best book light to use in bed while your partner is trying to sleep? Where do you hide the bodies of the people who talk while you're trying to read? In the basement of my apartment building. Ooh, that's a good place. Let Bria and I improve your reading life every Thursday on Reading Glasses, Maximum Fun's new culture podcast. Podcast. Learn, Learn how, how to, to read, read better. better.